World Expos have left their mark in the history of modern and contemporary architecture. Pavilions are created to show off the latest that new technology has to offer. The most visionary ideas, the most futuristic technologies are put in practice at every expo. And as a result, the pavilions themselves are often precursors of the cities of the future. Better city, better life. The quality of life in an urban environment is the theme of the Shanghai 2010 Expo which has broken all records in terms of visitors, investment and size. Innovation, art, tradition and ecology. These are the themes of the city of man living the Italian way. The Italian pavilion at the Shanghai Expo, which offers technological and structural innovations. Noi abbiamo intanto voluto dimostrare davvero l'eccellenza italiana. We wanted to show off Italian excellence and we wanted to do so with an effort that would involve the Italian system to the full. davvero in pieno il sistema Italia. Lì il sistema Italia c'è tutto. C'è la cultura, c'è l'arte del passato. Here we have the whole Italian system. We have culture, art from the past, modern and contemporary design. And we also have technology. All this revolves around an idea. In some way, we needed to give an idea of the best way of living and of working. And I think the idea of referring to a medieval village, where the areas are people-friendly, has been a success. The Italian pavilion is one of the largest at the Expo. The structure has been devised to operate as a special bioclimatic machine with the aim of significant energy savings as well as the prerogative of a natural type of environmental comfort. A visit to the pavilion, which covers an area of over 7,000 square meters on three floors, gives visitors the sensation of crossing the whole of Italy, where they can see the latest artistic offerings, try out technological innovations, and sample the delights of our cuisine. The design was devised as if it were a series of small film sets. We worked in conjunction with Iguzzini to create the particular mood lighting. Every surface is created to be justified by light. Each object has its own dimensional and perceptive autonomy. The interiors of the Italian pavilion have been built as if they were landscapes, in sequence. Layers of vision that alternate to create a multiple sensory adventure. The lighting design followed several themes. Certainly it needed to guarantee the different areas in the building a suitable lighting comfort. But then we also needed to be able to modify lighting effects and also limit the use of power to within the minimum amounts required and made possible by current technology. The entire lighting project for the Italian pavilion is controlled by a system of lighting management that allows minimum energy use. Photovoltaic elements have been integrated into the external glass coverings to act as a shield against radiation. During the day, light saving is guaranteed by a master pro control system that allows elements to be dimmed. The Expo has looked into strategies of urban and sustainable development that can improve living quality for people living in urban areas. In the Livable City area, an international jury has selected 45 of the world's cities as examples of urban excellence. 
This project has transformed a shell, originally for industrial purposes, into a mechanism to diffuse natural and artificial light, making this diffusion easier. Outside, at night, Pavilion B3 is transformed to a dynamic, multicolored landscape using very little energy, thanks to light up RGB LED lighting. We face these old industrial buildings, covering them with a facade of large openwork terracotta slabs, reminiscent of the typical traditional Italian styles and decorations of Vietri. The figurative development of the lighting used in Pavilion B2 is based on the link between architecture and light. The front features transparencies and openwork to turn the structure of the building into an architecture of light which comes to life and is transformed by light. I think there is a magical relationship between light and architecture. They are closely tied, like the sun and the moon. Each one helps to reveal the other. The beauty of light lies in the fact that it does not destroy matter, it reveals it. The original work stays the same by day, while at night we can see it interpreted. Old pre-existing factory buildings have been faced using perforated backlit panels, created using large terracotta slabs to form a balanced, alternating sequence of filled and empty spaces. The lighting project has brought together Italian style and quality, thanks to a careful, creative and technical design process. The story of Pavilion France is that of a project devised for a world exhibition and therefore, as we see it today, it is a building created to hold some 6,000 people every hour. Our idea was to raise the building above the water level and to create a garden in the centre for cooler atmosphere and a screen in steel, one of the innovative features on, on this pavilion. Air, water and earth. Our perceptions of these elements is the theme of the French pavilion. The architecture is surrounded by hanging gardens and rests on an artificial lake. We needed to do something extremely simple. It had to be very robust. Uh, it had to have some sort of um, iconic, obviously an iconic uh, look. The French pavilion stands out for its structure and its details. The outer metal screen has been enhanced by specially created lanterns, developed through a collaborative project between the architect, lighting designer and Iguzzini. We developed a perforated metal shield so that when you looked at it, it wasn't glary, that it had sort of a soft glow. It, it then had to put light back onto the building as that was one of Jack's concerns, that not only did he want the frame to be lit, he wanted the buildings behind the frame. The Shanghai 2010 Expo is pursuing a different idea of the city, that of the future. Bright cities, full of meaning and comfort, but also the leading players in a global movement to reduce our consumption of energy and the environment. Even intangible things can become more beautiful, more livable, more, more pleasant. In the end, this is one of the strong points of our tradition and of Italian creativity.